You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. To the head coach with host and board certified psychiatrist, Dr. Scott Bay. Dr. Scott is here to discuss topics in today's mental health to help you better understand psychiatric illness, reducing the stigma surrounding diagnosis and treatment, and exploding myths and stereotypes about the mentally ill. Dr. Bay will take your calls and address your questions with advice based on sound science and, most of all, with compassion. So please welcome the host of The Head Coach, Dr. Scott Bay. You're listening to The Head Coach, coming to you live on the BBM Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Scott Bay, the head coach himself. You're a psychiatrist with all the latest mental health-related news. Tonight we're going to be talking about anything and everything to do with the mind, the brain, human behavior, how to feel well emotionally, how to cope better with stress, how to improve your relationships, how to rid yourself of bad habits, and we'll do the best we can to make sense of the mental health angle of current events. And also, I'll be bringing you my own personal take on the latest research into the causes and potential new treatments for mental illness. All that brought to you with the perspective of more than 25 years of practice of psychiatry and quite purposefully brought to you without the hype and distortion and bias of other media sources who claim to be mental health experts. To further my goal and my motivation of promoting mental health and wellness, of getting better information out there about how to achieve mental health and wellness. And I want to be your source for any and all questions you may have regarding mental health issues. And if you, while you're listening, have a question or comment about what I'm saying, or you have any mental health related question or comment at all, please feel free to Bring me your questions. If you want to call live during the show, you can do that immediately. You can call this number, 866-451-1451. Again, the number for any questions. If anybody listening wants to call in, it's 866-451-1451. And if you're not listening live or you just rather would not call with your question, you can also get me a question via email. My email address is Dr. Scott, that's spelled D R S C O T. That's right, just one T for me, folks, at yahoo.com. Again, that's D R S C O T at yahoo.com. You can send an email. After I get the email, I'll read your question on the following week's show, not giving out any personally identifying information, of course and give you my answer to whatever question or concern you may raise. It is April 15th, 2021, as the show is airing live and being also recorded for your archived pleasure. Now, normally, April the 15th is a very, very stressful day. It's a day normally when stress peaks here in the United States, of course, because it's tax return filing deadline. Now, this year, we get a little bit of a break, for federal anyway. Federal returns aren't due until May 17th. We get a little bit of a break because of all the turmoil and disruption because of the pandemic. But your state may still want your tax returns filed by today, 
So you're not off the hook. And hey, it's only 7.05 p.m. You have just under five hours left if you really, really a true, serious, dedicated procrastinator. And I just know that there are those of you out there who are. So wait a little bit. You got time. All right. Well, we're going to talk first on tonight's show about another issue that's current that relates to mental health. And that is the fact that we have the vaccines. We've had them now for many months, right? They've been out since December, but they've been much more widely available to the general public in terms of all different age groups, in terms of pre-existing health conditions or not. And that's only been for the past few weeks. And even though there are issues with some of the vaccines, right, the AstraZeneca has not been approved in the U.S. and there's issues with it elsewhere in the world, the J&J shot, which was approved in the U.S. and has been used, now that's on hold because of concerns of side effects. But still, even with all that, there's still plenty of vaccine out there for the Moderna and the Pfizer for people to get it. And how is it? Related to mental health, well, tonight specifically, I want to talk to you about having potentially difficult conversations with your family members or with your friends or coworkers, what have you, about the vaccination. Well, did you get your vaccine? No, why? You do? Oh, okay. Um, here's another example. Well, We'd like to get together, but we're only getting together with people who've had their vaccine. What? You see what I mean. Sometimes these conversations can get very, very contentious and difficult. And it's not like we're not used to difficult, contentious conversations. I mean, we've been having those around politics for years before the pandemic got here. We just now have... The pandemic is something else altogether to have very strong opinions about that may differ with people we're very close to. So let's take a look at that and at least examine the issue and maybe get some of you some help in terms of negotiating these difficult conversations. So here we are as millions of we Americans eagerly roll up our sleeves for our coronavirus vaccines. By the way, if anyone wants to know, I've had both doses of mine and very relieved. But there's a significant number of people who remain hesitant about the shots or reject them altogether. Consequently, many people are finding it difficult to navigate conversations with loved ones who have divergent views about the vaccines as well as social situations involving those with different vaccination statuses. While a poll conducted by the Kaiser Family Foundation in March showed that the share of Americans who have gotten vaccinated or want to right away was growing, 17% of Americans were still taking a wait-and-see approach, 7% were planning to get vaccinated only if required, and 13% said they would definitely not get a vaccine. So that's more than a third of the people answered the poll question, if you're keeping up with the math there. And again, that was back in March, um, so only a month ago, so fairly recent data. Now, I don't know if... I personally, or maybe you either, have encountered one person who has not had challenges around these conversations, because there's probably at least one or two people within your circle that have differing opinions on how to take care of themselves health-wise, considering the vaccine. But experts say it is possible to avoid straining or damaging your close relationships and still have productive conversations about vaccines with family and friends who don't share your views. And here's what they recommend. First, manage your expectations and set boundaries. 
Really, really good advice for dealing with these issues. It would be a mistake to enter a conversation like this convinced that you're going to be able to persuade another person to change their mind. If you're going into it saying, I'm going to win this argument, you may or may not. And if anything, you might fray the relationship connections you have with your family, your friends, with your close person, even more than before you had the discussion. But as you can see, it's very important as we move forward out of this mess, how to handle these situations and more important tips on that after this commercial break. You're listening to The Head Coach, coming to you live on the BBM Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Scott Bay. Please stay tuned. If you seek a courageous advocate, prepare to champion your rights with consumer service agencies that support aging populations. Carol Ann Hamilton is the one for you. Carol Ann is an elder care coach, author, and speaker with a quarter million hours lived experience successfully supporting unculpable aging parents. As a result of a challenging journey, Carol Ann revolutionizes how stressed out caregivers restore serenity to their worlds. She also brings over 25 years of change management expertise in Fortune 500 settings to catalyze urgent transformation within the elder care industry. Carol Ann is a popular speaker at conferences across North America. She has appeared via TV, radio, and print globally. Now you can tune in weekly to get a dose of her inspiration plus down-to-earth advice to cope with even the most difficult aging parents. Listen Wednesdays at 9 a.m. Eastern on Bold Brave Media and TuneIn Radio. Dr. R.C. will share extraordinary resources and services that promote educational success as well as making a difference in the lives of all social workers as well as the lives of children, adolescents, and teens of today. She will have open discussions addressing many of the issues that we face about our youth and how being employed in the uniquely skilled profession of social work for over 18 years has taught invaluable lessons through her personal experiences. She will also provide real-life facts, examples, and personal stories that will confirm that why serving as a child advocate is extremely beneficial when addressing the needs of the whole child. Listen live Saturdays, 10 a.m. Eastern on the BBM Global Network and tune in radio as Dr. R.C. will provide thought-provoking information that will empower, encourage, and strengthen students, families, and communities across our nation. You can also visit her at soarwithkatie.com. Welcome back to The Head Coach, coming to you live on the BBM Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Scott Bay, the head coach himself, your psychiatrist with all the latest mental health-related news, tips, and advice. Right now, we're talking about how to manage and negotiate those difficult conversations with people close to you around the issue of vaccination or not. Right, so... If you challenge someone's beliefs about the vaccine and think you're going to win the argument, you may cause more trouble than what was there to begin with. So that approach is basically setting you up, setting yourself up for failure. It's human nature to get defensive when your belief system is being challenged and attacked. People tend to identify with their belief systems and an attack on your belief system feels very much like an attack on you, all right? So approach it as a negotiation, not as something that you're going to convince the other person, period. Also, acknowledge concerns and try to figure out the reasons behind them. How you bring up the subject matters. Instead of asking pointed questions such as, Why haven't you gotten your vaccine? You can try sharing your own experience with the vaccine and give others the opportunity to ask you questions. Like, for example, you mentioned that you got your vaccine, you tell them about the experience, and so on and so forth. If you're talking to someone who isn't ready to get vaccinated, it's important to acknowledge their feelings and let them know they're not alone. That allows you to begin with a position of empathy and understanding. 
Wow, empathy and understanding. Remember those? Yeah, they've been in precious short supply for too long. But the main point here is listening supportively rather than just challenging someone's beliefs and negating them and putting them down for their beliefs to keep the lines of communication open. That's the best way. Acknowledge someone's feelings, have empathy, have understanding. That's really the best way to handle any uh, divisive issue that could threaten a relationship. Another bit of advice, don't lecture, shame, or threaten. When talking to a relative or friend, avoid becoming preachy and moralistic. At some point, if they feel that they're being disrespected, that they're not being listened to, that their concerns are not being validated, then they will pull away from you. You can also ask people what would help them feel more confident or increase their interest in getting vaccinated. That is a disarming way to ask, and it gives you something that is more positive to talk about, which can help move the conversation forward. Think about it. Instead of saying, well, what's the matter with you? Why don't you want to get your vaccine? Instead, just say, okay, I understand that you're hesitant. You have concerns. Lots of people feel the same way. What would help you feel better about getting it? Again, you know, you're validating someone's feelings. You're approaching it with empathy. You're you're having open-ended communication uh, to keep this issue from damaging the relationship. So be prepared to direct loved ones to sources they would trust, right? Unfortunately, the, the sources that most people think of as trustworthy or uh, accurate, such as Center for Disease Control here in uh, Atlanta, that is um, going to be challenged by some people. Again, as part of all the fear and mistrust of authority, that uh, a large number of people who are against the vaccine feel. uh, It includes um, all the uh, basic authoritative sources that you would think of. But again, if there are sources that people close to you would trust, perhaps other family leaders uh, or members, perhaps faith leaders, certain community groups, Prominent health officials and organizations, maybe, maybe not. I read of a different study done where they looked at a focus group uh, of some people who were of a certain demographic that were well known to be against the vaccination. And so they looked at these vaccine hesitant or refusing people and their conclusion about what would be the most likely thing to turned their tide in favor of considering the vaccine would be advice from their own doctor, that that was much more impactful than any feedback, certainly from politicians, even from health authorities or public service announcements. Uh, If they got factual information and reassurance from their own doctor, that would help people much more uh, likely to consider taking the vaccine, even if they were hesitant at first. But lastly, again, when it comes to negotiating this issue with people close to you, know when to back off. Conversations about vaccines may not be resolved quickly, and in fact are not likely to be resolved quickly, so you need to know when to stop. Signals to pay attention to in this regard include overall mood and temperament that you're seeing in the conversation, body language, where the discussion is going. If tempers are starting to rise and the conversation becomes combative or defensive, it's time to back off. The more you try to convince them at this point in the conversation, the more likely you're just reinforcing their beliefs. At some point, you just want to let them be and wait for the right moment. This is an indication that they're just not ready to have a more open discussion. They're entrenched in their views, 
and any more trying to convince them is just going to alienate them. It's, uh, it's time to back off, let the issue lie, and see if they're better able to discuss it at another point. Now, even with all that advice, I know it's still going to be hard to have that conversation, but uh, hopefully that will help some of you. When we come back, another really important stress and the workplace update. You're listening to The Head Coach, coming to you live on the BBM Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Scott Bay. Please stay tuned. What if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern, on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy EasySense.com and learn how, with your help, we can fight these horrific brain disorders. That's EasySense.com to learn more and help support the Broderick Foundation. Tune into It's All About You with host Dr. Martha Latz, a lively weekly broadcast on BBM Global Network, one of the most empowering shows for time-starved, overscheduled multitaskers. The professional expertise of Dr. Latz is directly available live every Thursday at 1 p.m. to answer and address concerns about relationships, life transitions of career, meeting, dating, and committed relationships. It's All About You with Dr. Latz will expand your understanding of current current concerns across your relationships by broadening and expanding possible solutions in developing skills for mutually desired outcomes. Dr. Martha's expertise is as a licensed marriage and family therapist, life, transition coach, and all things to do with communication at work, home, and with friends. Check out her website at auniquetherapycenter.com. Welcome back to The Head Coach, coming to you live on the BBM Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Scott Bay, the head coach himself. You're a psychiatrist with all the latest mental health-related news, promoting mental health and wellness, reminding you, taking your phone calls. You have any question related to mental health issues whatsoever or comment about anything I'm discussing on tonight's show, you can dial in. It's 866 866- Four five one one four five one to ask your questions again eight six six four five one one four five one. Next up on the head coach tonight, I have another stress in the workplace update for you. That is a semi regular feature of the show. I actually had a double header stress in the workplace update on last week's show, but I found another one that I wanted to give you this week. This is how to get through a bad day at work. And this doesn't necessarily relate to a bad day at work because of the effect of the pandemic on your job. Um, However, as the pandemic does sort of start to, to fade a little bit and people are starting to phase back into the workplace a little bit more, Um, It's definitely important to keep in mind that there are going to be some big adjustments. So how do you keep office politics, annoying coworkers, not to mention infuriating customers from fraying your last nerve? Have you ever had a bad day at work where the biggest challenge is keeping your sanity? It might be a broken printer or a co-worker who stole your idea that pushes you to the edge. But it's important to deal with the annoyances of a bad work environment in a professional way, even when you feel the steam billowing from your ears. Here are some tips that will help you keep your cool when irritants start heating up. 
don't fly off the handle. Remember that you can't control what other people do or say that annoys you, but you can control your reaction to those annoyances. And a large part of keeping calm involves maintaining perspective. In the heat of the moment, everything seems worse than it likely is. So, to help rein in the frazzled feelings after a bad day at work, let logic lead the way. Ask yourself if you're responding with the appropriate level of rage. Chances are, You don't need to blow your gasket over a cell phone with a depleted battery or a misplaced shoe. Being aware of your emotions makes them easier to control. Now, this is a lot easier said than done, but keeping things in perspective and trying to stay calm even when all around you is chaotic definitely can go a long way to helping reduce your stress. Another tip, try to be empathetic. When another person, whether a coworker or client, is frustrating you, take a minute to put yourself in their shoes. Remember, you're not the only one who could be having a bad day. Just as you wish you could be cut some slack every now and then, be the one to give someone else a break. Everyone wants to feel heard, so hear them out fully before you offer a reply. Acknowledge that their frustrations are being taken seriously. You might be surprised at just how effective it is at diffusing the pressure. You know, in my own private practice of psychiatry, and by the way, I do have my own private practice of psychiatry. I've been doing this for more than 25 years, and it's called North Fulton Behavioral Health Center. It's located in Roswell, Georgia. If you want to check out what I'm doing, you can go to nfbhc.com, and that's the initials for the name of the practice, North Fulton Behavioral Health Center. I have a number of patients who work in retail and even call centers, God help them, and Definitely, the biggest part of their workplace stress is dealing with difficult, if not irate, customers. And what I try to get these people to do is, if you stay calm and let the customer fume, then they will calm down faster. If you let them project their anger onto you and you start getting angry, then it's adding fuel to the fire, right? It's just like blowing the, the pumping the bellows on the fire to get those coals, those embers burning hotter. But if you just keep your cool, you stay calm, you don't take the bait, you don't take on the other person's anger, then they might actually calm down faster. So you just say, yes, I'm sorry, ma'am or sir, that you're unhappy with this. Uh, I will take a look at the issue you're concerned with and see what I can do. So again, you regret that they're feeling upset, but you're not taking responsibility for it. And you're letting them know that you're just going to focus on whatever the issue is, not all the extra stuff that this person is saying about, you know, negative comments about you as a, a worker or your company that you work for or the product that your company is selling, what have you. You're just going to focus on, okay, this is the issue that you want help with. I'm going to do what I can about that issue. And you just focus on that and let the rest go. Okay, now, is this easier said than done? Of course. Does it take a lot of work and practice to get to that point? Absolutely. But if you're consistent with it, it definitely will keep your level of stress lower, even if you are working in a call center where just about all the time you're dealing with upset and irate customers. Good tips on avoiding a bad day at work. Block out petty irritations and chatter. If environmental stressors are gnawing at your nerves, you've only got one option, and that's to shut them out. 
Seek solace by closing your door if you have one, going outside for some fresh air, leaving your desk for a break, or plugging in your headphones. Well, it's time for a commercial break. We come back more essential tips at avoiding workplace stressors. You're listening to The Head Coach, coming to you live on the BBM Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Scott Bay. Please stay tuned. Author, radio show host, and coach, John M. Hawkins, reveals strategies to help gain perspective, build confidence, find clarity, achieve goals. John M. Hawkins' new book, Coached to Greatness, unlock your full potential with limitless growth. Published by iUniverse, Hawkins reveals strategies to help readers accomplish more. He believes the book can coach them to greatness. Hawkins says that the best athletes get to the top of their sport with the help of coaches, mentors, and others. He shares guidance that helps readers reflect on what motivates them, rediscover and assess their core values, philosophies, and competencies, find settings that allow them to be the most productive, and track their progress towards accomplishing goals. Listen to John Hawkins' My Strategy, Saturdays, 1 p.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network and to Tune in radio. Mike Zorick, a three-time California state champion in Greco-Roman wrestling at 114 pounds. Mike, blind since birth, was born in Hartford, Connecticut. He was a six-time national placer, including two seconds, two-thirds, and two-fourths. He also won the veterans folk-style wrestling twice at 152 pounds. In all these tournaments, he was the only blind competitor. Nancy Zorick, a creative spirit whose talents have taken her to the stage and into galleries and exhibitions in several states. Her father, a commercial artist who shared his instruments with his daughter and helped her fine-tune her natural abilities, influenced her decision to follow in his footsteps. Ms. Zorick has enjoyed a fruitful career doing what she loves. Listen Saturday mornings at 12 Eastern for The Nancy and Mike Show for heartwarming stories and interesting talk on the BBM Global Network. Welcome back to The Head Coach, coming to you live on the BBM Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Scott Bay, the head coach himself, your psychiatrist, with all the latest mental health-related news and tips for achieving mental health and wellness. We are in the midst of a work stress place. (laughs) <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. Stress in the workplace update. Even better if you say it correctly. He was talking before the break about things to do to tune out petty irritations and chatter. And you, if you're lucky enough, you have a door that you can close in your office. If you're not so lucky, you're at a cubicle or you're in an open area, plug in some headphones or other options. Just Find a reason, an excuse to get up from your desk, go somewhere, and take a break. And if the weather allows, go outside and get some fresh air. Go for a little walk during your break. Even better, take some positive co-workers with you. They need a break too. But aside from physically blocking out the irritations, practice tuning out. Instead, sort of mindfully... Think about the positive things going on in your life at that moment. Or just give yourself a menial task to distract yourself. Something to just break the cycle of having to listen to or experience the same sort of irritations. Something as simple as taking out the trash, even if it's not your job. Or changing the the toner or cartridge in the copier, just something to distract yourself from what's going on to give your brain a break. And then there is the perfect art of the blow-off. The blow-off technique, what is that? This is similar to what you would use to gracefully exit a conversation. Except here, you engage as little as humanly possible. If your workplace feels dysfunctional with coworkers or clients attempting to drag you into a gossip fest, give them the slip. A simple, 
Oh, you don't say, well, I've got to get back to my work, can be plenty effective. This will help position you as someone who doesn't want to be bothered with certain discussions or office gossip. Now, it's surprising how stressful office gossip can be. You might think, well, look, you know, what harm can that do? It goes on in every workplace all the time, and that's true. But depending on the situation, it can be very stressful, and it can really bring one's mood down to listen to everyone's negativity and complaints all the time. Um, especially if it's things, uh, you know, opinions and ideas that you don't share. So having to put up with that all the time can be very negative, can be very stressful. Uh, so you can find ways to avoid having to listen to that. Another tip is break the bad mood cycle. Moods are contagious, whether bad or good. So do your part to halt the spread of infectious negativity. If your coworker or boss is having a bad day at work, you don't need to sympathize by echoing their bad mood. Do your best to lift their spirits. You never know how a couple of kind words can turn someone's bad day at work into a not so bad day. Or Let's say in a worst case scenario, you try to do that and they're irritated with your effort too. Fine, just leave them alone. But staying away will also help you avoid the contagious aspect of their negative mood. And again, if you happen to find yourself in an especially good mood, um, showing it may help lift others' days who might not be having such a good day. And you can use humor as a tool, all right? Even in the workplace, never underestimate the power of goofy workplace humor. If there's a chance to lighten the mood, even if it's privately, grab the moment. Find the funny things, even in a bad situation, that can help alleviate a lot of the tension. Just be very careful to make sure that you don't lose sight of, of your professionalism, and as a rule of thumb, if you have to follow up your humor with, I was only kidding, that means there's a good chance your joke might not have been well received. So again, using humor in the workplace, a great way to diffuse tension. Uh, Just be careful not to push things too far, get yourself or anyone else in trouble. And... Another tip here, end the day with a clean slate. Remember, you work to live, don't live to work. Leave work at work and resolve outstanding conflicts before the day's end whenever possible. This provides a better chance to mentally recharge overnight and start fresh the next day because you don't have to take home from work lingering negative feelings about whatever stress or difficulty or conflict there was. Make a list at the end of the day with all the tasks that you want to accomplish tomorrow. That way, you don't have to bring your work brain home with you. Now, that really can help in a lot of ways as far as reducing your stress, but I want to just especially mention that doing that will help you sleep better at night. That's right. If you make a list at the end of the day with all the tasks that you want to accomplish the next day at work, you don't bring that home with you in your brain and it will not disturb you when you lie down to go to sleep at night, when it's quiet, when your brain isn't preoccupied with other tasks or the TV show that you're watching, what have you, and your brain is just sort of free to kind of float and free associate including thinking about what you're going to have to do at work the next day. If you've already made that list and you put it down in paper and you left it at work, it is far less likely that those thoughts will stay in your mind and disturb your sleep. So there you have it, some good ways to cope with stress at work. 
this week's Stress in the Workplace update. When we come back from this next commercial break, can a smartphone app actually change your personality? You want to come back and listen how? You're listening to The Head Coach, coming to you live on the BBN Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Scott Bay. Please stay tuned. The opiate epidemic has reached crisis levels, and with so many families affected by addiction, opiate-related drug overdoses, and death, the time is now to have a real constructive conversation about addiction that could lead to better prevention, treatment, and recovery. Alan Charles, author and keynote speaker on drug abuse and prevention, presents The Alan Charles Show. Alan brings a message of hope, sharing his unbelievable story of surviving a 24-year addiction to cocaine and and highlights from his memoir, Walking Out the Other Side, an addict's journey from loneliness to life. His raw honesty and courageous heart breaks the stigma of addiction and offers a unique perspective into the mind of an addict. Join Alan each week as he brings his listeners to a true understanding of the grip of addiction. It is only with this understanding that we can begin to heal. The Alan Charles Show, Thursdays at 9 p.m. Eastern on the BBM Global Network. Are you struggling to care for elderly parents or a spouse? Do you wonder if being a caregiver is making you sick? Are you worried about taking time off work to care for elderly parents and balance work, life, and caregiving? Has caregiving become exhausting and emotionally draining? Are you an aging adult who wants to remain independent, but you're not sure how? I'm Pamela D. Wilson. Join me for the Caring Generation radio show for caregivers and aging adults, Wednesday evenings, 6 Pacific, 7 Mountain, 8 Central, and 9 Eastern. Stern, where I answer these questions and share tips for managing stress, family relationships, health, well-being, and more. Podcasts and transcripts of The Caring Generation are on my website, PamelaDWilson.com, plus my caregiving library, online caregiver support programs, and programs for corporations interested in supporting working caregivers. Help, hope, and support for caregivers is here on The Caring Generation and PamelaDWilson.com. Welcome back to The Head Coach, coming to you live on the BBM Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Scott Bay, your psychiatrist with all the latest mental health-related news. The Head Coach himself, bringing you anything and everything to do that promotes mental health and wellness. Well, this article caught my eye. I wanted to share it with you. There are smartphone apps that do anything and everything, right? Including mental health. There are smartphone apps that you can access a therapist virtually. You can have virtual therapy sessions on your phone. You can get all kinds of uh, information about mental health issues. You can learn how to do mindfulness meditation, which I highly recommend. But now, it's possible that a smartphone app can change your personality. Well, it doesn't sound as drastic as it seems, so I want to tell you about this. Personality traits, such as conscientiousness or sociability, are patterns of experience and behavior that can change throughout our lives. Individual changes usually take place slowly as people gradually adapt to the demands of society and their environment. However, it is unclear whether certain personality traits can also be psychologically influenced in a short-term and targeted manner. Researchers have now investigated this question using a digital intervention. In their study, around 1,500 participants were provided with a specially developed smartphone app for three months, and the researchers then assessed whether and how their personalities had changed. The five major personality traits, they are openness, conscientiousness, sociability, or extroversion, considerateness or agreeableness, and emotional vulnerability, or otherwise called neuroticism. Now, I much prefer the term 
emotional vulnerability. Neuroticism, in my opinion, is an outdated, anachronistic term that is also very stigmatizing. So, but these are the major personality traits, and that's what the researchers examined. The app included elements of knowledge transfer, behavioral and resource activation, self-reflection. That's, of course, going to be important if you're going to want to change personality traits, right? And feedback on progress. All communication with the digital coach and a companion, which was basically just a chat bot, took place virtually. The chat bot supported the participants on a daily basis to help them make the desired changes. Now, what were the changes after three months? The majority of participants said that they wanted to reduce their emotional vulnerability, increase their conscientiousness, or increase their extroversion. Those who participated in the intervention group for more than three months reported greater success in achieving their change goals than the control group who took part for only two months. Close friends and family members also observed changes in those participants who wanted to increase expression of a certain personality trait. However, for those who wanted to reduce expression of a trait, the people close to them noticed little change. This group mainly comprised those participants who wanted to become less emotionally vulnerable, an inner process that is less observable from the outside. The participants and their friends alike reported that three months after the end of the intervention, the personality changes brought about by using the app had persisted. These surprising results show that we are not just slaves to our personality, but that we can deliberately make changes to routine experience and behavior patterns. Now, this research can be important for health promotion and prevention. The findings also indicate that development of the personality structure can happen more quickly than was previously believed. Change processes accompanied by digital tools can be used in everyday life. However, more evidence of the effectiveness of digital interventions is needed. For example, it was unclear whether the changes achieved were permanent or only reflected temporary fluctuations. The present findings are not only interesting for research, but could also find application in a variety of areas of life. In health promotion and prevention, for example, such apps could boost the resources of individuals as people's attitude to their situation and personality traits, such as conscientiousness, have an influence on health and healthy aging. Now, I'm sure you're curious to know what is this thing called The smartphone application PEACH stands for personality coach, right? The P-E from the word personality and the A-C-H from the end of the word coach, so hence the name PEACH, P-E-A-C-H, was developed as part of a project funded by the Swiss National Science Foundation to study personality change through a digital intervention, again, with a digital coach and chatbot. The application provides scalable communication capabilities using a digital agent that mimics a conversation with a human. And it's remarkable that an app can bring about personality change. And we will wrap up our discussion of that and more important mental health information when we come back from our next commercial break you're listening to the head coach coming to you live on the bbm network and tune in radio i'm your host dr scott bay 
please stay tuned. America is out of control. Today's capitalism and the approach to money is in fact a symptom of a more widespread pattern of excessive behavior. In his book, The Culture of Excess, How America Lost Self-Control and Why We Need to Redefine Success, clinical psychologist Dr. Jay Slosar portrays an America where excess fuels the drive to succeed. Dr. Slosar examines the cultural factors that lead to excess ranging from obesity to fraud to pervasive budget deficits. His book examines the powerful economic and social factors and their impact on our psychological well-being. Dr. Slosar explores the psychological impact of increasing narcissism, perfectionism, self-destruction, and our identity confusion. He offers recommendations for helping Generation Me become Generation We. Those who resist Slosar's message will want to avoid his discussion of regulation and his recent message that at this point, democracy must be more important than today's capitalism. Get his book now online or by visiting thecultureofexcess.com. MJ Domit is the owner of Expect to be Empowered, a company whose specialty is empowering people to live their best life by following their heart and accepting themselves unconditionally. After studying and making personal changes, MJ now focuses on giving others tools for self-empowerment. She provides individual and group workshops for people who are physically, emotionally, and spiritually blocked. Inspired by her work at Expect to be Empowered, MJ authored the book Waves of Blue Light, Heal the Heart and Free the Soul with accompanying empowerment cards she is a spirit book of the year gold medal living now book award winner and her book is a number one amazon bestseller in spirituality and was a 2012 gold medal winner recognized as the living now spirit book of the year an inspirational speaker mj will show you how you can repurpose every area of your life your life did not just happen to you you chose it which means you can change it visit www.expecttobeempowered.com or call 866-264-8024 Welcome back to The Head Coach, coming to you live on the BBM Network and TuneIn Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Scott Bay, the head coach himself. You're a psychiatrist with all the latest mental health-related news. Just wrapping up our discussion of the Peach app, okay, Peach, uh, contraction of personality coach. And again, um, the app includes a digital agent, that you interact with that mimics a conversation with a human. It includes digital journaling, reminders of individual goals, video clips, opportunities for self-reflection, and feedback on progress. There are weekly core topics and small interventions that aim to address and activate the desired changes and thus the development of personality traits. The app was developed as a research tool, but in the future, it is thought that research apps such as Peach will be made widely available, so stay tuned. Now, you know, there's always a discussion, best way to treat mental health issues, is it medication, is it therapy? But in the long run, they they hold the same value for people with depression. So therapy costs more, it takes more time than swallowing pills. But for people with a new diagnosis of major depression, the costs and benefits of drugs versus therapy end up being equal after five years, according to an analysis that looked at treatment costs, positive and negative health effects, impacts of treatment and depression symptoms, looking at things like productivity. People newly diagnosed with depression should have a chance to try individual and group therapy sessions, especially cognitive behavioral therapy, or CBT, as their first treatment, if they would prefer that over medication. Now, there's a good reason to give people the option to choose. Uh, uh, People are happier with having the option to choose, and some people prefer one or the other. But we have to expand the capacity of the healthcare system to provide greater access to therapy than there is currently available. But it could be more cost effective to do that by giving people more effective treatment. They're depression free more and faster. They're going to perform better at the workplace. You might assume that antidepressant medications are more cost effective in therapy, they don't require as much travel time or contact time away from work, but when incorporating the long-term effectiveness of treatment, neither one is superior to the other. So since drugs or therapy are equivalent 
from a health economic perspective, you have to take into account the patient's values and preferences. So again, there are times when it's difficult to make the choice, especially when people have very difficult to treat depression, they've tried multiple medications and none work, there are side effects, there are relapses, things like that. So all this goes into the cost-benefit analysis. Uh, But again, a long-term comparable study outcome looking at depression versus cognitive behavioral therapy shows that in the end, you wind up in the same place. And that includes delivering CBT by video also. Um, You know, again, what we need more of is more trained providers to provide cognitive behavioral therapy, make it more accessible, make it more affordable, make it a priority as far as health insurance coverage instead of one of the first things to be eliminated from health insurance coverage to cut corners. So there you have it. Drugs or therapy, either one can be as effective for first episode depression. Well, that brings us to the end of tonight's show. I hope that you enjoyed listening to the news and information that I enjoyed bringing to you. And I hope that until we get together again next time, you have a wonderful, stress-free week. But if not, then you need to call Dr. Scott. Good night, and thanks for listening. This has been The Head Coach with Dr. Scott Bay. Tune in each week as Dr. Scott discusses the latest findings in medical research and the causes and potential new treatments for mental illness, current events and controversies relating to mental health, children's mental health, military and veterans mental health, and stress in the workplace. Here on Dr. Scott Bay's The Head Coach. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.